The most common transactions we'll have to do for inventory are when we purchase it and when we sell it. So we need to deal with that with the FIFO method. So what is the FIFO method? Well, it stands for first in, first out, and it's just an assumption that we make that the first items of inventory in are the first items out. And it's important to remember that this may not be true. It probably definitely won't be true. It's just an assumption, so we don't have to identify each individual unit. So we need to know how to process all of these transactions in this table. We're going to start with this one, sales of inventory. So before we can sell inventory, we need to purchase it. So that's quite easy. The supplier tells us what the price is. We don't need to figure that out. They tell us. Um, but when we put it in the inventory card, it's going to go in date order. And then with FIFO, we assume the units are in a metaphorical pile in this date order. It's not true, but we're just going to assume like this. Let's say we're selling basketballs. Now, basketballs are a great... Um, uh, type of inventory to use FIFO for because it's difficult to identify each individual one. You can't literally put a sticker on because it'll fall off at a basket. Well, you can't stack old ones on top of the newer ones, etc. So, great one for FIFO. Let's take this one. April the 1st, bought five units at a cost of $10 each plus GST, receipt 0909. Remember, with the inventory card, we never need the GST. We just want the cost price. So I've got five units in here. April the 1st, receipt 0909. Five units in at 10 for 50, and my balance is the same. And I'm going to assume they're in a nice neat pile like this here in pink. Then, on April the 2nd, I bought 10 units for a total cost of $200 plus GST on credit from Hello Hoops invoice 45. So, uh, first of all, we, need the, we don't need the GST, obviously, but we need a unit price. So, I've got $200 for 10 units. So, I'm going to go April 2nd, invoice 45. It's an in because it's a purchase. And $200 divided by 10 is 20. 10 units. A $20 is $200, so this number should match the total cost here, which it does. And I'm going to assume now there's 5 at 10 at, for 50 here. That's my first pile. And then the next pile is 10 at 20 uh, for a total of 200. I've got them there and there. And that's how we deal with purchases. What we need to do, though, with is deal with sales. And it's very simple with the sale. We just assume first in, first out. Let's take out, this is our, our inventory card as we left it. So we're assuming there's 5 at $10 here first. Then two piles here of 20 for a total of uh, 10 units at $20 each. And these are basketballs. And then this happens. April the 3rd, cash sale of three units for $30 each plus GST. Receipt number 5712. And remember with the inventory card, we just want cost amounts. We don't want GST and we don't want sale amounts. So we don't need this. We're going to need this later, but we don't need this now. So I guess what we need to ask with this question, which three basketballs left? How, how, how could you possibly identify that? Remember, these all look the same. They're probably all stocked in a big cage. They're not stocked nice and neatly in date order. So we, there's no way we could possibly tell which three basketballs. And it doesn't matter. So why don't we save our time and money on, and spend it on more important things and just assume it's these top three here. They're the ones. So I'm going to assume on April the 3rd, receipt 5712, the three that went out were three $10 basketballs. And that now leaves me with two at $10 and 10 at $20, which matches my metaphorical pile here. Then on April the 4th, there's a credit sale of five units for $33 each, including GST. I don't need this amount yet. I just want to know which five units should I assume were sold. And I can never tell. So I'm just going to assume first in, first out. The first in were these two at 10. And then I'll go for these three at the top of the next pile. It's definitely not going to be the case, but in reality, I'm just going to assume that, yeah, this is what happened. So I'm going to get rid of those ones. So I'm going to assume two left at 10. And now I don't have any $10 ones left. So we just leave that blank. We don't write zero, zero, zero. Don't do that. We just leave it blank. And then I'll assume the next three that went out with the $20 ones. So three at 20 is 60. And now I'm left with seven at 20 for a total of 140. And that matches what I've got here. And the purpose of doing this is so we can record things in the general journal. So let's just take this transaction that we just did. Credit sale of five units for $33 each. So the first thing we do is a debit to account receivable because that's a credit sale. We don't have the customer's name. So whatever their name is, we'd put it there. But that will be $165. That would be offset by two credits. One to sales for $150 and one to GST clearing for the GST. And together, that's what's called the sale part. So with a sale, remember, we need to do five things. We've got a sale here for three, trans, uh, three items, and then the other part of the transaction is two items. 
debit to cost of sales expense credit to inventory and we we look reading that it just says credit sale five units 33 dollars each we can't tell what that is and that is why we have our inventory card because now if i go to april the 4th invoice 321 here it is it says there i valued this at two at 10 for 20 three at 20 for 60 so these two numbers here 20 and 60 add to 80 that is the number i use there and that's how i link my inventory card to my general journal what did we just learn? Well, we learned uh, that we're doing FIFO. We need to know all these transactions. And we just learned the first one there. When there's a sale of inventory, the rule under the FIFO method is simply first in, first out.